And instead of doing your warm up in your composition book, today you will be on page 351 in your workbook. We are going to be answering these questions by graphing six points on the coordinate plane provided on page 351 in your workbook. Remember the first number tells us which way to move in the x direction and then the second tells us for y. Here we're going to describe this translation. We don't have a vector in this picture to be as specific as we can, but we can describe it as moving up and to the right. We could also describe it maybe as like northeast or how far. What can we add to the diagram to help us write a more precise description? We could add measurements, which would help us figure out how far it is in that picture. If these are mile long triangles, then our answer for how far to move it would be different than if they were only a few centimeters across. We could also add a vector to describe the way that it needs to move or the direction that it needs to move, or perhaps a grid. So here it says translate. It also has a vector that you could put in there. Describe the translation and use as much detail as possible. We can translate along the vector from a to a prime. We can call that vector a a prime. How can you use the coordinate plane as a tool to describe the translation? If we click show coordinate plane, we can see here that it looks like it goes up one and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not quite up a full unit, but it does look like it goes over exactly nine. Use the coordinate plane to describe the translation. Does the image represent a translation of two units down and five units left? Well, it's definitely going down and left. If we zoom in here, we can see it goes down one, two, and right, or sorry, left, one, two, three, four, but not five. So no, it does not show that. This is a translation of two units down and four units left, but not five. Here it says change the location of the image to represent a translation two units down and five units left. So if we went two down and one, two, three, four left. So I need to move this one one more to the left so that it matches that vector.
Graph the image of figure A, B, C, D under a translation of six units down and two units, or six units right and two units down. So I'm going to go six to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two units down. Same for point A, one, two, three, four, five, six, and down two. One, two, three, four, five, six, down two. One, two, three, four, five, six, down two. And then it says check it. And we're in the correct spot. Figure A prime, B prime, C prime is the image, or the new version, of figure A, B, C under a reflection. Where do you think the line of reflection is? If I click try it right now, it doesn't line up with C prime. So we're going to need to shift this over until it does. Looks like we're getting closer. And now we're on C prime, A prime, and B prime. So does your line represent the actual line of reflection? How can you tell? Yes. When we reflected our picture lined up perfectly with A prime, B prime, C prime. And if we click on the coordinate plane, our line is the y-axis. How can you describe the reflection? You can reflect over line L or over the y-axis. It depends on whether you have the coordinate grid there. If you have that coordinate plane there, it's easy to identify where the y-axis is. Otherwise, you might describe that as line L if you're just on a blank plane. Here in number eight, it says, is figure S the image of figure T under a reflection across the x-axis? How do you know? If it's reflected across the x-axis, it should be the same distance from that line in both of these pictures. So T is 2 away from the line, but S is 1, 2, 3 away from the line. So this is not a reflection over the x-axis. They should be the same distance away from the line, but on the opposite side. So one would be at positive 2 and the other would be at negative 2. Now it says adjust the vertices so that it is in the correct position. So we're going to move these all up 1 so that they are in the correct spot now. You can see I have 4, 2 and 4, negative 2. 4, 4 and 4, negative 4. 1, 2 and 1, negative 2. 2, 4, and 2, negative 4. So what they do when they reflect over the x-axis is they just change the y-coordinate to its opposite value. From 4 to negative 4, and 2 to negative 2. Here are the results of the class. So everybody's going to answer this question, and it will place all of our figures on one grid. and we have it in the correct spot. Reflect across the y-axis. 
So if we're going across the y-axis, it needs to go on this side. Here's that y-axis, and we talked in the last lesson that if you're reflecting across something, it needs to go to the other side of that line. So we should have a point here. That's one away. This one is two away from the y-axis, so one, two. This one is one, two, three, four, so we need to go four in the other direction. This one is also four, so we need to go four to the left. And then click check it to verify that you've placed it in the correct spot. Okay, so we have to decide if A is a translation, a reflection, or neither. A appears to have just shifted up and to the right. It doesn't look like it's flipped around. So when we click on A, we're going to click translation. B. B also looks like a translation down and to the right. C. It appears that C is a reflection over the y-axis. You can see it's a mirror image. D. D appears like it has a reflection and then a translation down, but it isn't one of these single motions. This is a combination of motions. If it was just a reflection, it should be placed here. And if it was a translation, it should be oriented the same way, where our long sides are here and here, rather than where they are currently. So we're going to click on neither. All right, the distance between points stay the same. That's true for both. It's actually true for all rigid motions. It includes rotations as well, but we'll get to that in another lesson. Segment lengths stay the same. This is also true for both. They might get moved around, but their lengths stay the same. The angle measures stay the same in both as well. The orientation stays the same. That means it's facing the same direction, but in a different location. So the orientation only stays the same in a translation. In the reflection, the orientation is flipped. Make sure your warm-up is complete in your workbook. And then if there's any notes that you need to write down from this lesson, maybe talking about how it changes in a reflection, make sure you include those in your workbook as well.